Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog. So let's get to it. All right, rock stars. So I really don't feel like I have any super big stories to talk about. I try to put them in order of, you know, what's really going on. So, I mean, I guess I'll just go in the order that I have on my um, phone, my notes. Uh, let's talk about this Martin reboot. So the word around town is that they are planning on bringing back the old classic Martin. Now we all know if you weren't watching Martin, then you just obviously was a hater. There's absolutely no way that you could not enjoy that show. Every time I hear when people say they never liked that show, I am just like, what? How do you not like that classic? Now I will say that towards the end, it was not as good as it was. We know that the show was going through quite a bit of um, changes. One being Martin Lawrence's apparent addiction to some sort of drug. He was going through it. He was a big star. Um, and, you know, he did a whole stand-up routine on just the pressure of how all that kind of brought him down. And we all remember when he had the big breakdown in the middle of uh, Ventura Boulevard or something like that out in the valley in Los Angeles when he was running, you know, overheated. And that definitely was drug-induced. <laughs> I don't know if he ever really fully 100% came out and said it, but I kind of feel like he did. Anyway, that was one of the issues that was going on. The second issue that was going on is there was some sort of relationship between Martin Lawrence and Tisha Campbell. I think at one time it was consensual um, as time went on and Tisha went on to meet Dwayne Martin and then went on to marry him. Uh, I think it was hard for her to separate um, and become friends with Martin Lawrence and still try to carry on this on-air relationship, okay? Everybody always commented on the chemistry that Martin and Gina had together. There was no denying it, and um, I don't even know if it was all the talk back then, but since then, we have realized that them two probably had something going on, and um, when she tried to just, you know, now I'm with somebody and we need to cut it, I think Martin Lawrence had a problem doing that. They also say that Tisha Campbell had a momager from hell. Okay, her mother was her manager. And we have heard a lot about how the mother single-handedly almost ruined Tisha Campbell's career by just being way, way, way too involved. I mean, even back to the days of Spike Lee saying when um, they were shooting school days, you know, Tisha Campbell's mother was almost the reason that he wanted to put Tisha Campbell out the movie all the damn gather. So all these things that was weighing in on the show began to be apparent on the actual episodes. And I guess once Tisha Campbell um, was going to sue because she was having so many issues, um, I think there was a mediation done and they were able to come to some sort of agreement that Tisha Campbell would not be on screen the same time that um, Martin Lawrence was on screen. And that was when you start to really see um, kind of the, you know, the downfall of the show. It became pretty much Martin, Pam, and Cole, um, you know, and Tommy, of course, but Gina was not there. And for whatever reason, Gina and Martin is really the, was really the core of the show. And then, of course, the friends kind of added in. So <clears throat> y'all see how it got official with this shit for y'all. So anyway, all that was going on. And um, once Tisha couldn't be on the show with Martin, there's really no way that you can keep a relationship. This is a married couple you know, in, in this kind of way. So the show went away. Now, fast forward to today, you know, in this day and age where everybody wants, you know, that old thing back, I can understand why you would. You get that whole full feeling of nostalgia. Martin Lawrence's fiance, what the girl name is, y'all? Her name is Roberta Morad Farr. She posted there was going to be a reboot. Now, we haven't got any official word from anybody, just the fiance. However, the fact that she's with Martin Lawrence right now, you know, kind of makes everybody be like, oh, shit, you know, is this real? And, you know, we we have to remember that Martin Lawrence is good at kind of just adding to the fodder. You know, they've been talking about bad boy whatever, what would it be? Bad Boy 3? They've been talking about that for years, bringing it back, Martin Lawrence, Will Smith, and 
You know, while I feel like Will Smith could probably still kind of hold up his end of the bargain, you know, in that very, very physical role, even though I'm sure it wouldn't be like that now that they're older, there's no way that Martin Lawrence can do it. We all see that Martin Lawrence has slowed down considerably. I'm not sure what exactly is going on with him, but there are some health issues there, I believe. You know, I don't know how demanding that role is going to be on him, but, you know, you hear that they're going to bring it back, and then, you know, then it says, oh, no, you know, the... Nobody has green lit a, a part three, and so they go back and forth with bad boys. So it kind of makes me feel the same way with Martin. Now, do I feel like they need to bring back Martin? Absolutely not. It's a classic. There's no way that you can recreate that. And one of the main reasons is that I don't believe that Martin Lawrence and Tisha Campbell have resolved whatever issues that they had. You know, sometimes that damn bridge is burnt. And there's no way to get across the water. And we can't forget that Tommy is dead. He died last year. They said that even at the funeral, you know, Martin Lawrence and the rest of the group kind of kept their distance. Or when, you know, there was, they, they never were all together. I think we saw Martin in a picture with um, um, Pam. What's her name? I can't, well, I can't think of the child name, T Tashina Arnold. And, you know, I, I don't think he has any issues with, um, you know, the guy that plays Cole. But definitely Gina and Martin. If they are not really going to be able to work it out, there's no way that that show will work. I don't want another Gina. Now, people really got excited when, you know, Gina, Tisha Campbell... She was at some sort of rehearsal, and um, TV One cameras caught up with her and wanted to ask her about this this possible, you know, reboot. And um, y'all don't really know what's going on with Tisha Campbell. Tisha Campbell ain't been normal in a long time. I started getting worried when she was playing the character, well, Dwayne Martin's character on The Real House Husbands of Hollywood, or whatever it was called, Kevin Hart's show. It was just a little bit on the manic side. It was, a, it was almost like overkill. Like, I was just like, what is happening here? Now, I realize she's playing a role, but still. And then, you know, then the shit started to carry over into her real life. And then all of a sudden, you know, she started singing again, and, you know, we tried to have some compassion for her because she came out, you know, with a very serious subject of her being molested. She had a, a song that was to help her be more vocal about what she, you know, what happened to her. And we was okay with that, <laughs> but then we was like, okay, then you can stop now. And, honey, she decided to keep on going. And next thing we know, we saw her in little bars and lounges and trying to sing, and I was just like, mm-mm. Mm -mm, somebody get this child on the stage. <laughs> so, when they asked her about, you know, this whole show possibly coming back, people got excited. She did not never say that the show was coming back. You know, she was just like, I can't say, but, you know, I'm just so honored to have played such a character that everybody loved but other than that I can't say you can't say because it ain't shit to say okay you know you're not going back to that show Martin knows that you guys are not gonna go back to the show together and I think Martin Lawrence has said plenty of times that that door is closed the door is closed like Nene said I mean I guess you know we could always just wait and see but I am not looking forward to no type of Martin reboot. Like, certain shows, to me, just needs to be left alone. And that definitely is one of them. But what do you guys think? Would you guys be here for a rehashing of Martin? Y'all leave your comments below. All right, you guys, you guys want me to talk about the Grammys. I'm sorry, I did not write down any notes on the Grammys because I never really do a review on the Grammys. Usually, the Grammys are boring, and um, I always watch them, but it's always such a mix of different genres and, you know, a lot of shit that I just don't really care about um, that, you know, this was another year where I felt like it was going to be that way, and I knew I wasn't reviewing it, so I just sat back and enjoyed it. To my surprise, I actually enjoyed the simulcast from beginning to end. I mean, I was able to appreciate everything that happened on the show, and that doesn't happen that often with the Grammys, so, I mean, I, I don't really know. I, I was pleased with the people who won, okay? The ones that I was mostly rooting for, Bruno Mars, Okay, he cleaned up. I think he won in every category that he was nominated in. Um, K Dot, of course, y'all know West Coast every day, bitch. West Coast is the best coast, fool. <laughs> 
I was very happy for Kendrick Lamar. I was not shocked in any kind of way that Kendrick Lamar won all of the awards that he did because I honestly felt that he had the best rap, rap al album out of all of the people that was nominated. Now, I know there was a lot of talk about Jay-Z and the fact that I think he was nominated, what did they say? Was it eight times? Don't quote me on the number, but I know he was nominated a whole bunch of times. He ain't won one, okay? And, um... You know, people were going on and on about Jay-Z being snubbed. You know, I'm not into the politics of the Grammys enough to know whether or not he had been snubbed. I mean, you know, we do know that Jay-Z has been very vocal recently um, about the black community and being there for somebody. He is definitely a leader, whether or not you look at him as a political leader. He definitely is making strides in the black community. And that may or may not have rubbed the Grammy people um, the Academy the wrong way and we know how he feels about y'all dumbass president and um, no matter how liberal we try to think that the music industry is okay we always got to remember that the good old boys is holding the strings okay so I mean it could be a whole lot of reasons why he didn't win but to me if you was just to ask me I didn't think that 444 was or 444 whatever you call it was you know I didn't think it was going to win when you put it up against a Kendrick Lamar album okay definitely it was critically acclaimed and uh, the subject matter that he talked about was something that was necessary okay but you ain't heard none of that on the radio <laughs> and i know that grammys is about sales still it's a popularity contest and um k k dot was just really way more out there um in that sense and i also felt like his album was better than 444 after i listened to 444 a couple of times i was done with it I ain't listened to it no more i mean i know a lot of people have but i'm just saying for me comparing the two I was good with K-Dot. You know, I had read, um, people wanted me to talk about the Van Jones show that Jay-Z was on. <clears throat> I didn't watch it, and I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, so I can't really speak on it. However, I did read an article that um, Jay-Z had with the New York Times, and it actually was really, really good. You guys, he is a very smart man. I always like to listen to people who understand that what their position is in life Sometimes it takes us a lifetime to realize why we are here on this earth. And I feel like Jay-Z has gotten to the point why he, you know, when he really, really knows, that's a blessing to know what your space is. And when you can kind of just be a voice for people who either don't know how to say it or can't say it, and then even put your money where your mouth is and make some differences. I mean, I just really like Jay-Z. Not necessarily for his, his music anymore, because, you know, Jay-Z is almost fucking 50 years old. Like, there comes a point in time, like even he said in that article, that you have to let the young kids, that's a, it's a young, young man sport. He said rapping is a young man sport. And it's time for him to let, you know, the young kids do that and for him to make differences in other areas in this world. So I don't really know what he talked about in Van Jones, but I do know that I just enjoy listening to him talk. He's very, very smart and very, very well spoken. Um, anyway, getting back to the Grammys. So they have their moment, you know, with everything going on, with the Time's Up, we did hear um, Janae, not Janae, M Janelle Monet. you know, she do the whole speech about Time's Up and then for um, Kesha to be able to get out there and sing her song, um, Praying. I'm sure that was a moment of validation for her because it just comes right at the right time with this Me Too and Time's Up when she was going through that whole court case with her old producer who she said had been sexually assaulting her and had her under control and was trying to keep her bound by contract and all of that. You know, for her to get up there and sing her emotional song, I mean, it was a testimony for all that she had been through. Real quick, let's talk about the Recording Academy president, Neil Portnov. He kind of went into a rant on Twitter, or was that an article? Basically, he said that if women want to be players in the, you know, in the industry on the executive level, then they need to step up. And I was just like, how could he say that? I mean, the whole thing right now is the fact that women have been held down. I mean, you can't possibly see the irony in what you're saying. Like Pink said, you know, women have been stepping up for years, but they also have to step aside to a man who may or may not de deserve the same position, but... Again, men hold the strings a lot of times and somebody has to be re willing to release these strings so that a woman can get in. All the fighting and fussing that women have to do 
to just be recognized by a man, I mean, there's absolutely no way that Neil cannot see that. Okay, so I was just like, uh, <laughs> you know what? We can't co-sign you, you on this one, Mr. Portnov. Okay, he's kind of come back out now, you know, backpedaled and pussy popped. Shout out to James and Alex. But there's no way that you can tell a woman that will just do better and not be willing to bust out this glass ceiling that women always have to hit. You know, it's a it's a strange time in the world today. You know, everything is so divisive. And again, I blame a lot of it on your stupid ass president. But um, it's just everything is against each other. You got black people against white people. You got Christians against Muslims. Okay, you got gays against straight. All right, you got men against women. I don't really know why it's so much chaos with everybody fighting for their position um i just i'm just ready for the dust to settle um like jay-z said in that article that i read i mean the discussion is there people are talking about everything so i mean i guess it can't be a bad thing i just wonder you know like i said where the dust will settle but um i don't know how i got off on all of that but uh, the grammys I did enjoy it. Y'all been giving the poll Alessia Car Girl some some stress about the fact that she won for, you know, best new artist. I don't know. I'm not familiar with her music, so I, I don't know when she came out. Some people say she came out in 2015 or 2016. Um, I guess the qualification for best new artist is your first album. Like, I don't know. All right. She was going up against Lil Uzi Vert. And as much as we really enjoy Lil Uzi Vert, he didn't win. OK, I don't listen to Lil Uzi Vert's music unless they play it on the radio, you know. So I I, I had <laughs> I had no chips in that game. Um, I enjoyed Bruno Mars and Cardi's performance. I was real proud of her. You know who I really enjoy, though? The lady who sang. I think she did. She sing Don't Cry For Me. Did she sing Don't Cry For Me, Argentina? I, why is that sticking in my head? I don't think that's what she sang. But anyway, what is her name? You guys, she's the one that has the, the video going around when she says she cannot fucking stand Donald Trump, that she would not perform for his ass because she can't stand his motherfucking ass. I think she said something like that. Anyway, I loved her. I just loved all of the... I mean, it was so dramatic, child. And she finished the song, and it still had like a whole minute left of the song. I'm exaggerating. But, honey, she just stood there with her hands up in the air like, bitch, I just sang that song. Y'all can cheer for me for the rest of these damn notes. <laughs> I enjoyed her. I loved it. I love all of that, you guys. Anyway, you guys let me know how you felt about the Grammys. Who you felt should have won. Were you happy with who did? Who do you thought snubbed? You know, was they being shady? All of that. Leave it in the comments below. All right, you guys. It's getting hot out here. Let me see what's my next story that I got to talk about. Um, oh, a sad story, actually. Leah LaBelle and Rasaul Butler, they were killed early, I believe, Wednesday morning. They said that the Range Rover that they were driving, I believe he was driving, um, was going at least more than double the speed limit of 35 miles per hour. Um, somehow they lost control of the Range Rover and hit a parking meter. They say that then the car spun out of control, it hit a wall, it flipped over, and um, that both Rasal and Leah were killed. Um, I didn't even know who they were, but evidently he was a um, basketball player, NBA player who had retired back in 2016. Uh, she was a contestant on American Idol. That's what most people know her from back in 2004. And, um, yeah, they were killed tragically so. They said there was just one car that was involved, which was theirs. And so I guess, even though they haven't said why this accident has happened yet, um, just me being my, you know, just me taking an educated guess, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. Either he fell asleep or they were drinking or just definitely not paying attention, looking down, maybe texting. Um, but those are usually the reasons why you know, you would lose control of your car. So they did not have kids together. He did have a daughter. I think they said she was nine years old from a previous relationship um, that he's, you know, that they've left behind. And just sad, you guys, just sad. You just never really know um, when your last day is. Whenever I hear stories about people who have died, like for instance, um, my kids um, grew up with 
you know, some friends, you know, from elementary school and knew him all the way through high school. This boy was Joe's age and was shot and killed the other day. Um, and I just think about the, the mom and what she must be going through. I mean, you could have seen him earlier that day and then by the end of the day, they're gone, dead and gone. Um, so my heart just broke for them. And you just never really know when your last day is. That's why it's always important to just, <clears throat> you know, tell people you love them. And <sighs> I'm getting, I'm getting off track, and I'm about to get emotional, you guys. You know, 18 years old, life just gone. I mean, this kid had some things going on. I mean, plenty of us have shit going on at 18 years old. You would hope that they'd be able to correct it at some time and go on and, you know, live their life. So. Anyway, you guys, didn't mean to get so dark on top of the blogs. Let me move on to the next subject. Rest in peace uh, to Rasal and Leah. All right, you guys. So uh, next story, I guess a hand clap is in order for your boy Colin Kaepernick. Okay, he's really out there being philanthropic and um, really trying to make a difference. Not just talking the talk, but walking the walk as well. Okay, now we already know that he sacrificed his NFL career um, for the bigger picture, which is trying to get some, <clears throat> just putting eyes on the fact that um, police brutality is a real problem in America um, for black people. We ain't got to go through all of that anymore. Anyway, Colin has decided that, um, well, he had, had decided a couple of weeks ago that he was going to, you know, he pledged a million dollars to, um, you know, the disenfranchised and oppressed communities, black communities um, around the United States. And he was urging celebrity friends to uh, match him on this, okay? And the way that it worked, it was called 10 for 10. And he was just variously, variously given $10,000 to different organizations around the country. Um, and then the celebrity would then join in donate ten thousand dollars so it would be a match pledge okay so i mean we had people from usher to serena williams to steph curry um even your boy meek mill from jail um they all donated to his cause and um he just hit the one million dollar mark so good for colin kaepernick i mean there's no way that he can solve all the issues in the world today but you know anytime you're really trying to make a difference by putting your money where your mouth is and really getting out there and doing the groundwork is always a good thing so i mean colin kaepernick is a, he's just i can remember a time when i didn't like him okay it was an old story that i did on top of the blogs and we won't even go back through it okay but even when you was an asshole at one time you know you can become a better person i think he's a great example of that so, uh, yeah, congratulations are in order for Colin Kaepernick. 10 for 10. Okay, he hit his goal. So let's talk about Kim Kardashian and these damn nude pics. Okay, now you guys know I like the Kardashians. But I am also not naive to the fact that they can sometimes be um, stealers of the culture. Culture appropriation. Now... Kim Kardashian decided to put these braids in. You guys have been calling them Bo Derek braids, okay? I fuck, I just call them French braids. And if you really want to keep it funky, I call it Patrice Russian braids because anybody who was black back in the day um, know that Patrice Russian used to rock the badass French braids going back, okay? Very, very long with the shells. This ain't nothing new. But whatever, you guys know how we got the whitewash shit. So it was the Bo Derek braids. And, you know, when she got them, um, it was, you know, it was this whole big deal. I didn't have a problem with the braids, all right? I thought they looked nice on her, okay? But we know that that is a black hairstyle. So once she got that, that was one thing. Then we had Grammy Weekend. And with Grammy Weekend, we had the Rock Nation brunch. We had the um, Clive Davis pre-Grammy party. And then, of course, we had the Grammys. And anybody who has social media i don't care what vessel it is you guys saw beyonce splashed over every i mean i swear i've seen beyonce the same five six seven pictures i had probably seen them a thousand times and i'm sure you're no different of her just slaying 
all of her black outfits, you know, kind of Black Panther-ish inspired outfits with the beret and the sunglasses and just this whole black, 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 okay? Um, you guys have to know that anytime, anytime Beyonce does anything where she's out there quite a bit, the Kardashians have um, a certain proclivity <laughs> towards trying to steal the spotlight. So the braids weren't enough. So now we move on to these naked pictures. Partially, some of the pictures have something to do with um, the promotion of Yeezy season. I don't even know what season it is. Is it six, seven? Um, whatever Kanye West new fashion line that's coming out. Um, so they tried to say that these pictures had something to do with his promotions. But, you know, you, you're nude. You're nude. <laughs> so how are you promoting the brand when you ain't got no fucking clothes on? But not only that, you guys. Like, I'm so... I don't understand. Okay, I, look, fashion is fashion. You, you like what you like. I got all of that, okay? But... I'm just sick of seeing her like in, it looks like Spanx, like underwear to me. Just like a bandeau, you know, some biker shorts or some sort of tight skirt that you can really get from like a cheap little five, you know, three, five, seven, five, seven, nine store, three, five, seven. You know, I just feel like she's had the same look, you know, come to find out it's because they've been trying to already put it in our minds that this is Yeezy season that's coming. But, you know. All of that is just stunts and shows, you guys. That is them specifically trying to steal the spotlight from Beyonce. You just can't do it, okay? You can't do it. Not in this way, because the fact that she is, you know, posting pictures of herself nude when she's this married mother of three, a very successful businesswoman, you would think that... You wouldn't resort to these type of things. Now, it's not like Kim Kardashian, you know, she, her whole career is built on the, her whole sex tape and all of that. So I get it. That that's her whole, you know, she's sexy and she's got this image that she needs. But she, the whole thing is she doesn't need to do that anymore. Like, why are you still doing this? I mean, she obviously likes it. And um, I'm sure Kanye likes it. Because what woman does these things without the blessing of their husband? But to me, I'm just like, what is going on there? Like, I really feel like, you guys know there's that competition thing with Jay-Z and Kanye West and Beyonce and Kim. So I just feel like he, he probably eggs her on like, you should do that. Because, fuck, everybody looking at Beyonce, you know, you going out there and make sure they looking at you too. But, yeah, I'm just like, girl, why are you doing this? I haven't got to the point where I had to unfollow her. I'm just over it. I'm tired of seeing that same look. And when you're just so obviously out there thirsty, I'm just like, okay, I'm sorry. But I mean, I still, I'm still good with the Kardashians. They definitely set a lot of trends out there, even though people don't want to admit it. Okay, but in this case, I'm just like, girl, you need to stop all this. I mean, you know, it's just enough is enough. Do you care what your kids are going to see or what they're going to say? I mean, I guess if you don't care, then you don't care. But you just ain't got to do that no more, Kim. What y'all think? You think that it's in direct competition with uh, Beyonce and, and uh, the fact that she's always so well put together on the gram? You guys, let me know what you think. So they say that your girl Amarosa is going to be on the next season of Celebrity Big Brother. Are you excited? Yeah, you guys, supposedly there were so many offers that were thrown her way. Everybody wanted Amarosa on everything. And ultimately, she sat down with her team and uh, she decided that she would do Celebrity Big Brother, okay, with the opportunity to possibly win $500,000 at the end if she is the last contestant standing. Um, I will put everything on the fact that Omarosa will not be that last <laughs> person standing, okay? But child, crazier things have happened. They say that she negotiated a $1.3 million deal with CBS, okay, one of the executives, top-level executives or um, thinking about developing a talk show with Amarosa. I was just like, who put this story out? <laughs> I mean, you have got to know that don't nobody want to see. Now, we will see her on a reality show. Okay, fine. But ain't nobody trying to sit down and watch no hour talk show with Amarosa. Okay, I think that she has alienated quite a few people and not just black folks. All right. So, I mean, but 
we'll see. That's all I'm going to say. But I don't believe it. I, you know, and CBS has not confirmed that um, other than saying that she will be on Celebrity Big Brother. Like I said, I haven't watched Celebrity I haven't watched Big Brother in years, celebrity or otherwise, okay? But I guess it's still all the rage. I bet you they will get a, quite a bit of an audience this this time with Amarosa. She will bring the views, but it's going to be hated views. We still don't see it for that bitch, okay? But uh, I guess congratulations to Amarosa. No fist pump of righteousness, though, child. Do whatever you got to do. That's all I got for you. We know that Alexa Sky has had her baby and, um, you know, she had the baby premature and the baby is in the hospital. Now they say that the baby is doing well. We see Alexa Sky in and out of the hospital going there to care for her child. And, you know, Willie Wop also uh, trying to be there for her and the kid. Um, we see all that going on. Well, I don't know exactly what happened the other day. <laughs> but uh, Alexa Sky took the Snapchat and got the fussing and going off on Willie Wobb talking about, you know, child support, you know, telling some bitch that he's sleeping with to tap him and tell him that he better bring his ass over there with the money. Otherwise, they're going to go to court and they're going to be doing child support and all. Listen, I don't know what's wrong with these girls. OK, do you have any sort of self-respect, any sort of pride? Like, why are you out here putting the shit out there like that, okay? First of all, you've seen all 28 other Willy Wop baby mamas out there getting into it with him sporadically on the Instagram, on the Snapchat, okay? Even had a couple of them fighting up at the Perimeter Mall in the parking lot. Y'all remember when they filmed the video and put that out there? You know, I don't think any of them would say that he's not a, a good father. He provides for his children, okay? But he's there for his children, not for the baby mamas. It ain't like the baby mamas ain't got onto, you know, the social media and fully reported on the ain't shitness nigga of Willie Wop. So you was warned 100% ahead of time. I'm just mad that the girl has made, you know, rest of your life decisions based on the fact that you was upset that Masika had a baby that came out of a one-night stand with Willy Wop. I don't care how much Masika want to rewrite history. Okay, we know how that baby came about. But the baby is there, right? Now, you done seen all this shit go down, and you still saw fit to open your legs and let this man climb on top of you and do his business and drop a baby off in you. I bet you he never, you know, uh, promised that he was going to be with you, hoping that you was going to be satisfied. Fuck, you had a whole season of trying to get at Masika because of this fact right so look let me give you a baby okay wham bam take it and um go on about your way you would think that she would have been happy with that now all of a sudden she done got upset that fetty wop is just being true to the fetty wop that he's always been girl what else did you think you was gonna get and then like i said ain't got no not name drop of pride okay you just out there really thinking you doing something by telling everybody about themselves and bitch we already everybody is clear on their positions in willie wop's life i had to let masika i was like masika you can have it girl okay because masika was just like you know the bitch clawed and screamed and fought and cried to get in this same position. And then, bam, when you get in it, you realize that the nigga ain't shit. Okay? He ain't shit to us. He ain't going to be shit to you. You just part of the lineup now. So I didn't even get mad at Masika. Because, girl, you consciously made this decision. Don't be up on Snapchat with this shit and making us have to read this and thinking that somebody going to feel sorry for you. And guess what? You got 18 more years of it. We ain't fixing to feel sorry for Alexa Sky because, girl, if you didn't get the understanding from all the other baby mamas previously, honey, you will never get it. And then lastly, you guys, I didn't even do quickies today. Um, Will Smith, his Instagram page. Everybody is going on and on about Will Smith's Instagram page. I love it. I mean, I like Will Smith. He just seems like a good guy. And he didn't got to that <laughs> to that age. Well, I guess like I can see in Will Smith what my my kids see in me. You know, they think I'm corny and shit. It's just so funny. He's just like it's like a child with a new toy. I mean, he's just so amazed with the things that can happen on Instagram. And I think he's really enjoying reaching out and kind of being in control of whatever he puts out there and all of that yes he does do his um you know his positivity posts and he's always been like that you can find videos and different clips of him saying certain things around there so i think it's a good it's a good little 
it's a good little medium for Will Smith. If you guys follow him on Instagram, he's very entertaining. And it's so funny that him and Jada Pinkett Smith are together because they seem so different, but that's probably why their relationship works and has worked in whatever way, okay? Because I know there's rumors about their relationship. Whatever it is, it's worked for them all these years, okay? So you just can't help but love them. All right, y'all make sure you follow Will Smith's Instagram page. Y'all, I like to sweat to death out here. Let me get off of here, you guys. We do this every single week. So make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you come back. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.